In Metal Gear Solid, we will meet Revolver Ocelot, acting as the first real boss fight. Ocelot will be deep in a room that holds the president of arms tech, Kenneth Baker. Depending on how well we do, Ocelot will change his dialogue with Snake. You're pretty good. Just what I'd expect from the man with the same code as the boss. It's been a long time since I had such a good fight, but I'm just getting warmed up. What? My hand! Stealth camouflage. Can't you even die right? You were lucky. We'll meet again! Who are you? I like you. I have no name. However, this changes if we get enough game overs during the fight, as Ocelot will change his tune about Snake completely. I'm disappointed. You're no match for the boss. Playtime's over, friend. You're not cut out for war. Don't worry. I'll kill you quickly. What? Stealth camouflage. Can't you even die right? You were lucky. We'll meet again. Who are you? This stands true for the Twin Snakes as well. Hmm, you're pretty good. Just what I'd expect from the man with the same code as the boss. It's been a long time since I had such a good fight, but I'm just getting warmed up. Stealth camouflage. Can't you even die right? You were lucky. We'll meet again. Of course, this changes when the same circumstances are met. I'm disappointed. You're no match for the boss. Playtime's over, friend. You're not cut out for war. Don't worry. I'll kill you quickly. In Metal Gear Solid, we can find a ton of hidden story elements and fun easter eggs, and a few of them can be found in Hal Emmerich's laboratory. We will finally meet up with the cyborg ninja when first getting to the lab. After defeating him, we are freer to look around the area and there are many cool things to find. First, before we even get to the entrance of the office, we can see the words Hal's Lab written on the door that leads to the hallway. This is likely a reference to Hal Labs, where game lead Hideo Kojima's good friend Masahiro Sakurai formerly worked. Inside the office, we can see some posters on the wall. One is of Zone of the Enders, and the other is of Police Knots, two past Kojima projects. 
On the desk in the middle of the room, we can find a PlayStation console and controller, a fun nod to the gaming system we are playing this on. Things change up a bit in the Twin Snakes remake, where only one poster can be seen featuring Zone of the Enders, the second runner. In the right corner of the room, we can find small figures of Mario and Yoshi. Shooting Mario will prompt a one-up noise and text while refilling some of Snake's health. Shooting Yoshi will cause the figure to make Yoshi's signature sound. In this version, the desk in the center of the room has a GameCube console and controller with a monitor showing the start screen of the Nintendo system. The small attention to detail in the Metal Gear Solid series has never been short of incredible, and these are just a few pieces of that puzzle. In Metal Gear Solid, after the fight with Gray Fox, Snake will need to find Meryl in the B1 area of the Nuke building. We can notice how Meryl walks to pick her out from the other guard on duty. Her swagger is more pronounced in the Twin Snakes remake. Once Meryl notices Snake, we can follow her into the bathroom. Doing so quickly will result in Meryl still being in her underwear because she won't have enough time to finish dressing. This stays the same in the Twin Snakes remake as well. Your Meryl. There's no way you could pass for a man for long. Once we are ready to move forward, we can use the first person view to stare at Meryl. Doing so will cause her to blush and turn redder and redder as time goes on, all while giving little one-liners about being stared at. What are you staring at? Come on, Snake! The reactions here are actually a bit different in the Twin Snakes remake. What? What is it? Why are you staring at my... <laughs> what are you thinking? In Metal Gear Solid 2, there are a few things and small details that people may miss right at the beginning. And one of the first is that we can control the camera during the codec calls with the left and right stick, zooming by clicking either one down. Diving into the water here, we can find a set of thermal goggles. Nice to have so early. Speaking of the water, the sea lice that litter the area have a few minor details as well. Raiden can step on them, squishing them right in front of their friends and family for a start. If we lay down and crawl into a group of the bugs, we can see them crawling all over Raiden's body. If we have rations in the inventory, the sea lice will attach to them, slowly draining the ration, prompting Campbell to call about how to stop them. Raiden, the sea lice are getting fat on your rations. Shake the equipment window to get rid of the bugs. You can go into first person mode, and while Raiden is wearing this mask, we will be able to hear his breathing. While you're in first person mode, make sure to check out those diving suits, which are a direct reference to Police Knots, a previous game from Hideo Kojima. And speaking of Kojima, if we enter the developer's names into the node when we first approach it, it will fill out the rest of the questions with the correct data for the person in real life. If you set the birth date to the same as the console's date, the node will have this special message. Once on the roof, watch out for the bird droppings, as Raiden can slip and fall on them. And if you look up in first person, you will get quite a surprise from the goals. After such events, it would make sense that Raiden would be taking his anger out on these birds. But if we indulge too much, Campbell and Rose will call and be rightfully pretty pissed off. Raiden, do you actually enjoy abusing helpless animals? I don't believe this. I had no idea you were that kind of a monster. I don't understand you, Raiden. If you're satisfied, get back to the mission. In Metal Gear Solid, the Kodak is a handy tool. Right off the bat, Snake would not be able to talk to his team without it. But the information that can be missed is sometimes pretty helpful. For example, when you first find the Sokum, which can be in a few locations, but the back of the truck at the heliport is the first place we see it, make sure to call Campbell. He will give you a rundown of the weapon and the codec frequency to Nastasha Romanenko. Good, you've got yourself a weapon. To use it, 
First, hold down the R2 button to enter weapon mode. Then select the weapon you want with the directional button. After you've selected the weapon you want, let go of the R2 button to exit weapon mode. The weapon you selected should appear in your hand. To use the weapon, follow the directions displayed in the window. If you use the R1 button, you can equip your weapon more quickly. While you're barehanded, press the R1 button to equip the last weapon you used. Press the R1 button while you're holding a weapon to be barehanded again. Don't fire your gun needlessly or you might be discovered. If you had a gun with a suppressor, it would be a different story. If you have any questions about weapons or equipment, you should ask our military analyst, Nastasha. Her frequency is 141.52. Now, anytime you find a weapon, Campbell will teach you how to use it, and Nastasha will give you some lore behind each piece you are holding when you call her. Хорошо. Good. You found a SOCOM. That's a Special Operations Command pistol. It's a 45 caliber pistol with plenty of stopping power. It's also equipped with a LAM for nighttime combat. If you hold down the weapon button, you can train the laser sight on the enemy to help you aim. If you find a SOCOM suppressor, you can equip that too. That pistol was designed specifically for use by special forces, so I think it will be useful. Some people find it a little heavy and hard to use, but it shouldn't be a problem for you. This goes for boss fights as well. Colin Campbell will have Naomi fill you in on each member of Foxhound you come across, and Nastasha will give you tips about how to fight each boss. If you've got a question about Foxhound, ask Dr. Naomi. Revolver Ocelot is a former member of Spetsnaz. After the fall of the Soviet Union, he apparently served in the Russian tax police's elite SWAT team. After that, he joined the SVR, the Russian Foreign Intelligence Agency, which was formerly a part of the KGB. But according to my sources, he was dissatisfied with the rigid system of the KGB and wanted to get out. That's when he was recruited by Foxhound. He's a gun fanatic and totally obsessed with cowboy movies and spaghetti westerns. He's also something of a sadist. He learned the most advanced torture techniques while he was with Spetsnaz. Yeah, he had plenty of practice. Lubyanka Prison is located right there inside KGB headquarters. In a gunfight, reloading is usually the most dangerous time. But he loves it. Use that to your advantage. You'll have to take him out when he's reloading. Can you see where his number of remaining bullets is displayed on the screen? Wait for the right moment and then take him out. a single action army? The first model of that gun was made in 1873, over 130 years ago. Today, they're still being made in small numbers, but uh, that's just for collectors and such. Nobody uses them in combat anymore. The biggest drawback to revolver-style handguns is reload time. That's your chance. In Metal Gear Solid, we will get a call from McDonald Miller, Snake's mentor. Miller is an expert on the Alaskan frontier and can give Snake various tips about the environment and animal life found in the wilderness. Before Miller reveals himself to be Liquid Snake, we can get some rather trolly and humorous lines from his codec calls. This could be part of him showing that he isn't really who he says he is. Snake, that floor is designed so that your footsteps echo. Listen, Snake. There's a way to walk so your footsteps won't be heard. I call it stalking. Here's how you do it. First, put your weight on the opposite foot that you're going to step with. Then, take a step so that your heel makes contact with the ground first. Then, as you slowly lower the tip of your foot to the floor, gradually shift your weight onto that foot. Use your knees to maintain the subtle balance. Try it. I... I can't do it. Another way is to... Wear your socks over your shoes. If you crawl on your stomach, you won't make any noise either. People who have been through war and survived develop a kind of sixth sense to warn them of danger. Trust your instincts as a soldier, as a gamer. 
When we are in the Nuke Building B2 area in Metal Gear Solid, make sure to stop by this room in the hallway as we can find Konami's signature Moai head inside on a desk. This statue is modeled after the head seen on Easter Island, which is why Konami uses them in nearly every game as an Easter egg. We can find the same thing here in the Twin Snakes remake, but of course, due to the graphical upgrades, we can see the Moai in much greater detail. There are many small details and hidden features in Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. One of the earliest that we can encounter is making snakes sick with the survival viewer. By going into the pause menu and opening the survival viewer, we can spin snake around a few times, which will cause him to vomit when we return to the game again. In Metal Gear Solid, we see that Solid Snake was able to bring his favorite items with him into Shadow Moses. Remember, except for your binoculars, you're naked. You need to arm yourself with whatever weapons you can find. I remember. First, I'm strip searched by Dr. Naomi here, and then all my weapons are taken away. Imagine yourself put in that position. Well, if you make it back in one piece, maybe I'll let you do a strip search on me. I'll hold you to that, Doctor. By the way, sorry to disappoint you, but I did manage to smuggle out my smokes. How did you do that? In my stomach. Thanks to the shot you gave me that suppressed my stomach acids. Cigarettes? How are those going to help you? You never know. While Snake may love the bold flavor of his cigarettes, the other crew members won't be so thrilled to see him smoking. Calling Naomi and Mei Ling, we'll see Snake getting some pretty severe lectures from both ladies. Are you smoking? Yeah, so what? Didn't you know that cigarettes contain benzopyrene, a chemical that leads to lung cancer? We now know that when benzopyrene enters the body, it changes to benzopyrene diolipoxide, BPDE, and attaches to the receptors on the P53 gene, the gene which causes lung cancer. The BPDE attaches to the P53 gene in three specific locations and causes precancerous changes to the lung tissue. You know a lot about science you don't know how good a cigarette tastes in the morning. Snake, are you smoking a cigarette? Cigarettes are poison, they kill people. Didn't you hear what Dr. Naomi said? He that cuts off 20 years of life, cuts off so many years of fearing death. Is that why you smoke, Snake? You're too afraid of life? While Nastasha Romanenko will have a bit of a different reaction. Nuclear weapons, nuclear reactors, hazardous waste. We are constantly being exposed to plutonium and other radioactive materials. Compared to that, smoking seems not so bad, no? In Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater, if you want to get the stealth camouflage, you will have to look for the keratin frogs that appear throughout the game. These cute little guys show up in the damnedest places, and shooting them counts towards unlocking the camo. This changes a bit in the 3DS remake, where the frogs are switched to Yoshi figures to celebrate being on the Nintendo handheld system. These Yoshis are not in the same places as the frogs in the original version though. Similarly, the GAKO camo that can be used to locate frogs in Snake Eater is replaced with the fruit camo in the 3DS version. This is modeled after the fruit that Yoshi eats in the Super Mario series and will draw Snake closer to the Yoshis by allowing us to hear their calls. This is a fun way to change it up between the versions and a great way to show love for the Nintendo overlords. At the very start of Metal Gear Solid, during the Konami splash screen, we can hear a delightful tune. If this song sounds familiar to you, it's because it's the intro to Police Knots, Metal Gear series creator Hideo Kojima's previous project for the PlayStation.
In Metal Gear Solid 2, you can find various posters around the tanker and big shell. They will make a strange sound if you lean up against the wall and knock on them. If Snake decides to go downtown with his hands though, this will cause an alert to go off, summoning every guard in the area. That's one way to learn to keep your hands to yourself. In Metal Gear Solid, Mei Ling is responsible for keeping your records, which means you call her on codec to save your game. If you call her and choose not to save a few times, she will get annoyed with Snake, ultimately giving him the silent treatment. Come on, Snake, don't call me for no reason. Continuing this pattern of disrespect will prompt Mei Ling to stick her tongue out at Snake, just another way Metal Gear Solid holds you accountable for your decisions. In Metal Gear Solid, depending on how quickly you get out of the first cargo area, Colonel Campbell will make a comment reflecting your speed. It's Snake. I'm in front of the disposal facility. Excellent, Snake. Age hasn't slowed you down one bit. How's that sneaking suit working out? It's Snake. I'm in front of the disposal facility. That took a long time. I guess you're feeling a little rusty. Don't worry. It's been a while, but it's all coming back to me. How's that sneaking suit working out? Campbell will also scold you if you are detected by guards this early in the game. Snake, your mission is to infiltrate, not to fight. Don't let the enemy see you. You didn't waste any time in getting spotted, did you? Too bad. Looks like your cover is blown. Proceed with extreme caution. In Metal Gear Solid, after the death of Decoy Octopus, Meryl, dressed as an enemy guard, will open the jail cell, which leads to a cutscene. This scene will change depending on if the Sokum pistol was picked up on the way. Without the Sokum, Snake will grab Meryl's Famous and taunt her. Don't move! So you killed the Chief, you bastard! Liquid? No, you're not. Don't move! Is this the first time you ever pointed a gun at a person? Your hands are shaking. <sighs> Can you shoot me, rookie? Careful. I'm no rookie. Liar. That nervous glance. That scared look in your eyes. They're rookie's eyes if I ever saw them. You've never shot a person, am I right? You talk too much. You haven't even taken the safety off, Rookie. I told you I'm no Rookie! You're not one of them, are you? Open that door. You've got a card, don't you? Why? So we can get the hell out of here! Looks like we'll be a little delayed. What are you doing? Don't think! Shoot! If you are carrying the Sokum, though, Snake will draw it on Meryl. Is this the first time you ever pointed a gun at a person? Your hands are shaking. <sighs> Can you shoot me, rookie? Careful. I'm no rookie. Liar. That nervous glance. That scared look in your eyes. They're rookie's eyes if I ever saw them. You've never shot a person, am I right? You talk too much. You haven't even taken the safety off, rookie. I told you I'm no rookie! <sighs> You're not one of them, are you? Open that door. You've got a card, don't you? Why? So we can get the hell out of here! Looks like we'll be a little delayed. This is similar in the Twin Snakes, though some liberties are taken much like everything else in the remake. Don't move! So you killed the Chief, you bastard! Liquid? No, you're not. Don't move! 
Is this the first time you ever pointed a gun at a person? Your hands are shaking. <sighs> Careful. I'm no rookie. Liar. Your eyes wander. There's no confidence in them. The eyes of a rookie. You've never shot a person, have you? You talk too much. You haven't even taken the safety off, rookie. I told you I'm no rookie! You're not one of them, are you? Open that door. You've got a card, don't you? Why? So we can get the hell out Looks of here. Looks like we'll be a little delayed. What are you doing? Don't think! Shoot! In the original Metal Gear Solid, if you press the D-pad buttons, you can change the color and movement of the background images on the title screen, a feature that holds tradition in many Metal Gear Solid games to come after. In Metal Gear Solid 2, you can collect dog tags from guards throughout the game. You can see if a guard has tags on them by noticing the shiny flash on their chest, but you can also use the thermal goggles to see them more clearly. In Metal Gear Solid, if you get out of the cargo area promptly, this is how the conversation with Campbell will go at the heliport. It's Snake. I'm in front of the disposal facility. Excellent, Snake. Age hasn't slowed you down one bit. How's that sneaking suit working out? However, if you complete any VR missions beforehand, Snake will add a line about this in the conversation, a small detail that adds that much more immersion to the Shadow Moses mission. It's Snake. I'm in front of the disposal facility. Excellent, Snake. Age hasn't slowed you down one bit. Thanks to the VR training I did on board the Discovery. How's that sneaking suit working out? At the start of Metal Gear Solid, we can see the credits of the voice actors starring in the game. One thing to note, most of these are not the actual names of the actors involved. While David Hayter, who played Solid Snake, updated his credit for the intro, many of his castmates kept their pseudonyms out of fear that the Screen Actors Guild would not allow them to take part in the project. We can see more evidence of this in some booklets for the game, where Solid Snake is credited to Sean Barker, a character David Hayter played in Guyver Dark Hero. In Metal Gear Solid 2, after you beat the game at least once, Raiden will appear on the title screen. You can change this back to Snake by waiting for the intro cinematic to play again. When you're on the start screen, you can press L2 or left trigger to cause a flash on the screen and a sound of thunder, while moving the right analog stick will scroll the background image and change the color theme. Neat tricks that make the title a bit more interesting. In Metal Gear Solid 2, when heading down the long hall of Deck 2's port, we can encounter a guard patrolling the dimly lit area. If Snake goes into this room and presses against the wall, it will trigger a pipe to fall over and this unique encounter. What? Somebody there? Who's there? Don't sneak up on me like that. Nah, it was just my imagination playing tricks on me. In Metal Gear Solid 2, at the beginning of the Tanker chapter, Snake can find some pentazamine a drug used for stabilizing the sniper scope in the game. This is odd because we can't find a sniper rifle anywhere at all on the tanker, but if you call Otacon, he will inform you of its other benefits, which Snake blindly believes. You have pentazamine in your inventory. If you need to take some, select it in the item window and push the enter button. 
Pentazamine is a mild tranquilizer used to treat clinical depression, obsessive compulsive behavior, and anxiety. It belongs to the benzodiazepinate family, and along with its antidepressant and anti-anxiety qualities, it suppresses convulsions. Take it when you have a tough shot ahead with a sniper rifle, and you need to minimize shakiness. But I guess you don't have one of those yet. Well, you can also try some if you're feeling really seasick. Otacon, I took the pentazamine and you're right. The seasickness is gone. Wow, really? What do you mean, really? You said... Drugs are mostly about placebo effect. If you believe it's effective, it is. You're more naive than I thought. In the tanker chapter of Metal Gear Solid 2, inside the engine room, we will be tasked with getting past the guards in a pretty large open area. If you have the grip strength, you can sacrifice a tiny bit of health and use this rope to get across more quickly. Up to the player on if this is more efficient, but I can tell you that it took me over 10 years before I realized that this rope was even there. In the original Metal Gear Solid, we meet Mei Ling, a Chinese-American data analyst and MIT student who personally designed many of Snake's most critical equipment items. She's in charge of saving the game as well, pretty much acting as a record keeper for Snake, during which she would offer proverbs and sayings to keep your spirits up and bestow wisdom on the player. Snake, remember what the girl said. The graveyards are full of indispensable men. Snake, you're all alone and surrounded by bad guys. Try to be careful and avoid getting into a fight whenever you can. You're right. Wow, you know all sorts of great quotes, don't you? <laughs> well, both my parents are from Guangdong, China, but I was born and raised in America. I've always liked reading literature from both sides. Kinda keeps me in touch. I'll share some more quotes with you if you like. I'm looking forward to it. But to tell you the truth, I'd like to learn more about you. <laughs> well, I'll think about it. Fans were dismayed, to say the least, at her removal from Metal Gear Solid 2, as Otacon seemed to fumble this task, ignorant to the advice he was giving to Snake. Hey Snake, what's hardest won, most easily lost? It's time, get it? Amazing how relevant these Chinese proverbs still are. Once the moment's gone, it's gone. Except for daylight savings time, of course. That extra hour to do anything you like with every autumn, gotta love it. Then again, you lose an hour every spring, so I guess the proverbs are right. Wow, they thought of everything. Did they even have daylight savings back then? Of course not. They knew how to save time. We're the ones that need to be tricked into it. Yeah, but you said... The moment never returns, Snake. Let's not waste it on idle questions. Okay. This gets worse the more you save the game. Snake even brings up Mei Ling and seems to miss her take on things. Chinese have a proverb that goes, scholars hold in esteem knowledge, not acts. See, they just sit around thinking instead of actually doing something, which doesn't make them too useful. Action is what matters, I think. Look, what I heard from Mei Ling was that... Snake, have you noticed that you bring her up a lot? Huh? Th that isn't the... Here we go again. What am I gonna do with you? Like I was saying... You and your hyperactive libido. It's a good thing one of us can keep all the details straight. If you save enough times, Mei Ling actually will make an appearance. Well, she will use a burst transmission to correct Otacon on his terrible behavior. Snake, do you know the Chinese proverb, care avoids air? Air is thought to be a kung word, meaning what? There's some linguists who think that this accounts for an almost universal utterance of the syllable er when people are at a loss for words. A kind of vestigial, hey! Ah! What a crock! What did you do with that little cheat sheet I made you? Err... Uh, oh, there it is! <gasps> hey! Err... Uh, that's really, uh... How could you do that? You know how busy I am and you... It's not what you think. Oh? So what am I thinking? What's going on over there? Oh, hi, Snake. Do you know that Otacon's been... Err... Uh, Mei Ling, we're in the middle of a mission and everything, so can we, you know... Hmm. Sure. And Snake, the real meaning of care avoids air is that if you're cautious, you can avoid making serious mistakes. 
Even if you've gotten used to the mission, watch what you do. Good luck. Yeah, Snake. Good luck. You? I'm not done with. Yeah. Let's discuss this, shall we? Uh... What happened to Mei Ling? He... <laughs> she got mad and went offline. What did you do? Nothing. Now, don't we need to get back to the mission? So much to do, so little time. <sighs> In Metal Gear Solid, we meet Meryl Silverberg, a tough, no-nonsense prisoner on Shadow Moses Island. This is not the first time we have seen Meryl, though. As in Hideo Kojima's previous work, Please Knots, she appears, claiming to be a remnant of the Foxhound Special Unit from home, which is Earth for the most part in Please Knots, complete with paint on tattoo. This version of Meryl also claims to like men, but not in that way, something we hear her express in Metal Gear Solid, though it was due to gene therapy, as we see Meryl ultimately get married to Johnny Sasaki by the end of Metal Gear Solid 4. I like to think that Kojima was working on Metal Gear Solid's story for quite some time. He clearly did. I guess this explains why we see Meryl in Police Knots, as there are plenty of Metal Gear references in the game, some as early as the intro with the Solid Snake neon sign. Either way, it is always fun to see where characters come from and what their inspirations are. Diving through Kojima's work to find these things out is a good adventure, and I highly recommend it. In Metal Gear Solid 3, we can spot a few things before the game even kicks off, starting with what game we choose for the start. Choosing MGS1 will grant some more stamina, and choosing MGS3 will give us all the special camos right off the bat. If we decide to go with MGS2, however, the cutscene changes a bit. The crew will refer to Snake as Jack, and we can notice his blonde hair throughout the plane scene. Once on the ground, it's revealed that Raiden is who we have been watching. Of course, this is just a troll from series creator Hideo Kojima, as many fans didn't care for the bait and switch with Raiden in Metal Gear Solid 2. This will grant a special cutscene where Snake sheds his skin. Oh, and Snake? Yeah. The crew isn't watching anymore. You can take off the disguise now. Good idea. This isn't right. Time for the Snake to shed his skin. On the helmet Snake is wearing, we can see the game's name, Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater, a lovely self-insert easter egg. That's not the only symbol we can spot either. While parachuting, if we look up in the first person view, we can see the Fox logo hidden under the chute. When a game starts with this many small cool bits, you know you are in for a treat. In Metal Gear Solid 2, if you take the time to watch the screen that is showing the Commandant's speech, you can actually see Gerlugovich's soldiers getting ready to make an entrance. A leak to other nations would make that contingency likely. But if this theory is correct, it means that there was a calculated intent to cash in on this opportunity by specific interests within the military industrial complex. We are here today to flush out and rid our country of these corrupting forces. That is our mission. You will bear that in mind. Ours is not the only military project devoted to Metal Gear development. In the Tinker chapter of Metal Gear Solid 2, Snake is tasked with taking photos of Metal Gear Ray. If we instead turn our attention to Marine Commandant Scott Dolph and send pictures of him instead, Otacon will become quite frustrated. So, any codec moments from you, Snake? The first one I'm seeing is... Hey, this is the Marine Commandant. Are you a fan or something? The next one's... The Commandant again. Look, if you like him so much, I'll print this out and make a panel out of it. Put it over your bed or something. What's next? Will you please stop sending me pictures of the Commandant? Next up is... Will you please stop sending me pictures of the Commandant? And the next one is... What is this? Snake, this isn't a game we're playing here. So, what's the last one gonna be? Snake, get serious, will you? We need those pictures. 
In Metal Gear Solid, when climbing through the first floor basement ventilation shaft on our way to see the DARPA chief, we can peer down into the neighboring cell to see Meryl working out. If we leave three times and come back, Meryl will be in her underwear while doing the workouts. This is slightly changed in The Twin Snakes, the GameCube remake of Metal Gear Solid, in which we would only have to leave once and come back to see Meryl in her skimpies. Leaving and coming back will cause her to change up her exercises, switching between wearing pants and going fancy free. In Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater, we can do a lot before the game even starts. Pressing R1 or right bumper will play a whispered Snake Eater line from the singer. If you input the Konami code before the intro begins, the credits will change to the team that made the intro. Moving the thumbsticks will move various symbols on the screen and control the movement of the credits, while pushing the sticks will change the logos and the color. Once we make it to the title screen, we can control the color, texture, speed, and optical zoom of the action happening on screen. Just a few fun things to do before starting up one of the greatest games of all time. In Metal Gear Solid 3, if you shoot the hornet's nest above the guard's head, it will cause them to panic and flee from the bugs. This makes the area with the rope bridge relatively easy to get through. In Metal Gear Solid 3, when we are on our way to rescue Sokolov, if Snake is wearing the mask, you won't be able to start the cutscene showing the meeting. Contacting Zero will provide some information as apparently, Sokolov is no fan of Major Rykov. Snake, when you meet Sokolov, don't go in wearing that mask. Why? He won't like it. Won't like it? No. Why not? Just trust me, he won't. Yeah. You'll need Sokolov's full cooperation to complete this mission successfully. Don't do anything to make him lose confidence in you. When you go in to meet Sokolov, make sure you remove your disguise. Got it? In Metal Gear Solid 2, if you take a picture of the right screen in the room with the dual projectors, an image of the ghost of series creator Hideo Kojima will appear. Sending this to Otacon will freak him out as he has an unreasonable fear of ghosts. Huh? Don't send me creepy stuff like this. What if I get possessed or something? Sorry, but this doesn't work. I hate to ask, but can you try again? In Metal Gear Solid 2, a game released in 2001, you can do a surprising amount of environmental damage. This is showcased well in the Tanker chapter, where in the crew's lounge, Snake can break the main glass window. Shoot up the magazines on the rack, Shatter the bottles behind the bar. And even spill the ice on the counter, which melts over time. Throughout the rest of the tanker, we can find these types of hidden bits. We can break the condiments in the cruise quarters and even make tonal sounds with the cookware. Smashing up the food supply can be quite a good time as well. This is also used as a gameplay mechanic, where you can shoot nearby objects to cause them to spill or spray, revealing any hidden laser traps. Another terrific small detail in Metal Gear Solid 2. In Metal Gear Solid, we meet Psycho Mantis. The former KGB psychic has a few tricks up his sleeve that makes this one of the most memorable boss encounters of all time. 
Things get weird before we even come face to face with Mantis, as Meryl will begin to act pretty strange the closer we get to the commander's office. During this period, if we use the first person view, we will see through the eyes of Meryl, even though the map will show Snake's cone. After we get adequately introduced to Mantis, he will show off his powers. During this, some dialogue will be different depending on how you have played the game, or if you have played some other Konami games. Usually, Mantis will remark that your memory is clean. Still, if your memory card has saves from a couple of different Konami titles, he will mention these as he reads your mind. You are a very methodical man, the type that always kicks his tires before he leaves. You are a highly skilled warrior, well suited to this stealth mission. You are extremely careful of traps. You are either very cautious, or you are a coward. Still don't believe me. Now I'll read more deeply into your soul. Ah, I can see into your mind. You like Castlevania, don't you? have not said often, you are somewhat reckless. This carries over to the Twin Snakes remake, though obviously the game list changes to Nintendo games. You are a highly skilled warrior, well suited to this stealth mission. You are extremely careful of traps. You are either very cautious, or you are a coward. Still don't believe me. Now I'll read more deeply into your soul. I see that you enjoy Nintendo games. You like action games? You've been playing Super Mario Sunshine, haven't you? You have not saved very often. You are somewhat reckless. Continuing on the Twin Snakes differences, the three portraits on the wall contain real-life people, Ryui Kitamura, Hideo Kojima, and Dennis Dayak. These pictures will laugh after Mantis shows his powers of moving the controller. Unlike the original, Mantis will then set fire to the room, or at least paint the illusion that he is. When this happens, Dayak's portrait will show a burned skull and muscle, which will prompt Kojima to look towards it. If we call Campbell enough times during the battle, he will give the secret to beating Psycho Mantis using the second controller port. I've got it! Use the controller port. Plug your controller into controller port 2. If you do that, he won't be able to read your mind. Suppose this doesn't work, and Snake dies after hearing this tip. In that case, Campbell will confront Snake about it after we start the fight again, this time mentioning that if the bandages on the statues are destroyed, Mantis won't be able to read Snake's mind. This will then allow us to eliminate the bus around the office. Snake, is there some reason you can't use controller port 2? Ah, oh, well, it's okay. Do you see something that looks like a statue on both sides of the room? Yeah. You mean those things with their faces all wrapped up in leather bands? Yes. Attack those statues to uncover their faces. Why? Those statues were modeled after Mantis's real face. Mantis despises the sight of his own face. He suddenly sees his own disfigured face staring at him. It might break his concentration. Snake. If you destroy the faces of those statues, you should be able to disturb Mantis's psychic powers. Psycho Mantis is genuinely a great character in a series filled with stellar writing and game development. This boss had me on the edge of my seat in 1998, and it still impresses me today. In Metal Gear Solid, you can select Briefing from the main menu. This is a collection of tapes that were recorded before the mission on Shadow Moses takes place. Suppose you exit from this menu after only watching the first tape. In that case, you will be greeted with a secret video of Snake trying to refuse the mission. Colonel, I don't work for the government anymore. Let me go back to Twin Lakes. Why, Snake? Is your life in Alaska all that great? There's a dog sled race this week. Next Saturday, I have to be in Anchorage. The Iditarod? The longest sled race in the world? When did you become a dog musher? Right now, my 50 Huskies are my only family. I've got to take care of them. Don't worry about your dogs. What do you mean? I'm sorry, Snake, but this vessel is headed for the Bering Sea. There's no room for debate. 
I told you, even if I do owe you, I don't owe anything to this army or this country. You will accept this assignment. Why should I be stupid enough to do that? I'm no patriot. Snake, there's enough dirt in your file from your days as an agent to keep you in the stockade until you're a very old man. Oh, I see. Blackmail. No, Snake. I prefer to look at it as helping you come to a decision more easily. But anyway, I know you better than that. You take this assignment even without the threat. Why do you say that? You're a natural-born soldier. You're not the grow-old gracefully type. It's the same for all of us who've seen real action. The only place we can feel truly alive is on the battlefield. I'm a soldier too. I know those feelings of powerlessness, frustration that you feel every day. You've tried to play the Boy Scout out there in Alaska, but you can't race dogs in the snow forever. Why don't you come back to us, and be a soldier again? You think my life is some kind of a joke? Snake, I just want to give you back your purpose in life. In Metal Gear Solid 2, Snake will come into a room with two projectors during the Commandant's speech. They will alternate switching between the screens on the left and the right. Snake can interact with the controls and switch the current screen showing the speech. If you do this too much, it will trigger a cutscene where a couple of Japanese models will appear instead of the lecture, which ultimately leads to Snake being humorously discovered by the Marines. Some say that the strategic importance of aircraft carriers will be reduced by the completion of Ray. The opposition from the Navy is an undeniable fact. There is a lot of pressure from Navy brass, especially those with submarine and air background. Not to mention interference from a major plane. But this project is vital to the Marine Corps. The enemy is sometimes closer to home than you think, gentlemen. Always bear that in mind. Ours is not the only military project devoted to Metal Gear development, but it cannot be more difficult. Snake, you okay? Snake! Snake! In Metal Gear Solid 2, during the Commandant's speech, we can find a Marine who seems to have forgotten his pants. Taking a picture of this and sending it to Otacon will send him into hysterics. So, any codec moments from you, Snake? The first one I'm seeing is... <laughs> this is hilarious! <laughs> this rules! But we can't use it. Get the shots we need! If you call Otacon while inside a locker on the Tanker chapter of Metal Gear Solid 2, you will be greeted with an easter egg that shows Snake mocking his pal about when they first met. This is a reference to the first time we see Otacon before the Grey Fox fight in the original Metal Gear Solid. This reminds me of when we first met. I was the one inside the locker that time. We're equal now, huh? Not unless I wet my pants. That's a low blow, Snake. Stealth camouflage? Who are you? Where is my friend? What? What are you talking about? Oh, what next? If you take the vents under the floor to get to Ray in Metal Gear Solid 2, you will be able to climb up the right side behind the Metal Gear. If you go into first person or use the camera here, you can spot Ocelot getting ready to crash the party. If you look again, he will be gone, and he won't show up at all if you have a weapon equipped. Sending a picture of him to Otacon will make him have a freak out. Huh? Don't send me creepy stuff like this. What if I get possessed or something? Sorry, but this doesn't work. I hate to ask, but can you try again? Squeeze my hog. 